okay, why is the unit test? If the developer B comes into the project and tries to run the same unit test, it should run under no circumstances. It should not have a database connection. It should not, oh, it works on my computer. No, it should work. It should be easy to implement. It should not be a whole, you look at the unit test, you assert, 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 do this, this, and that, this, post this, open that. You don't want that. Unit test should do one thing and one thing well. Have you term, heard the term single responsible to principal? It's healthy. So it's just classes should have only one reason to change, and it kind of falls into that. So you should only have, you should only do one thing. Uh, it should be made for future to use. Another nice thing, if you have unit tests in, the, in, your, in your code base, another developer comes in, he needs to learn your code base, or he, he or she needs to learn your code base. Then you're gonna look at it, like where do I start? I, if, I, if I'm doing that, if I, when, I, when I have developers joining my team, here are the tests, go take a look at. So let them run the test, figure out what the code works, what the features are, so it's, it's for future use, and it's how you build into a continuous integration. Again, the same goes for it. it should be run by anyone. It should be fast, and that's why we don't hit the database. That's why we don't hit files. That's why that's why we don't open files or close files. And that's why we don't uh, 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 call a web service or something. You should you should always run with a push of a button. Again, that's why it needs to run quickly. And you, you hear also hear the term the SOT. It's called system under test. So when you look at the store procedure, or I'm sorry, you look at the method that you're calling, it's gonna be under, it's called sub. So that is what you're expecting. You're not gonna be executing another uh, class any place else. If you end up doing that, there are ways of breaking it, but that's obviously another uh, slideshow, another presentation. It's called dependency injection. Another term you may hear is inversion of control. So those are things I'm going to show up, but I'm not going to be talking into the very advanced topics. Um, but that's where you want to start. So, okay, so I totally forgot to do that, obviously. <coughs> I'm going to hit the other VM going. Well, I'm talking about it, I guess. Still talk so I used the first one you saw is a virtual PC or visual. It comes with the Windows 2000, Windows 6, Windows 7. So now we're using the VMware. This is also a free version from VMware. VMware. Is anybody using virtual machines? One, two, three. Great. What do you like about it? It's just lightweight. Yeah. So it's just you can take it to any place. And I do when I was consulting. I had when I go to the client, I had an environment set up on the visual uh, my virtual machine. I work on that. It's, everything stays with that. That's the end of at the end, at the end of my. Uh, my work project, so I just give it to the app or just give it to the client, and all this is done, my machines are clean. And there is limitations with that, it doesn't work as fast at times, so hopefully we should have something here. Okay, I think we'll go to the next demo, we'll go to the next slide. So in the VS 2010, the ultimate versus seven people have Visual Studio 2010. Okay, great. So we have the architecture now. The architecture has a bunch of things in the app, going to talk about. But these are the things that you can take a look, take advantage of. If you have the ultimate skill, you're going to have the Explorer. You can build UML. It's really great. You know, we were, I was using Visual Studio 2008 before in the previous project, and I had to write UML diagrams and then fit in, in the work file, which I said earlier you can't execute. So this now with the UML files, you can put the UMLs back in your code, your solution, which is great. So and then that gets checked into to TFS. If you're using source control, see where we are. Great, that's coming up. Okay. Somehow it's sorry about the resolution. That's why you have a lot bigger resolution laptop. And It's just, I have to have another VM, so I apologize for that. I just didn't have 
assign the resources to get all this. This is a Visual Studio 2008. It's also running in TFS. Um, so one thing I'm gonna do to show you is the unit test. So let's really talk about that. So I have this project called Unit Test Demo. And also I'm using Professional. Another thing, reason that I installed here Professional, then I realized I need Ultimate. So I don't want to uninstall and redo this old VM again, so I just choose the using the old existing one. That's another reason that I did it. But you get to see you know, what's available in the Visual Studio 2000 Professional. Can you use Professional users? So you can't do the database. I don't think you can't do the database, but you can understand that. Plans for the Irish Pat St. Patrick's Day in William. Good plans for the evening. Bring something good. Green. Which is the Microsoft MS test, the other is the end unit. So end unit came first. End unit is the implementation of JIM unit from Java. So that came out later. Uh, for but MS test came very late. So, so Microsoft is catching up with the unit testing, if you will. Um, <coughs> this is our project. I'm gonna open the open that solution. So as you see, you just look up where the DLO is, you just hit, hit run, and that test should run. So this exists separately, so let me put that state where it should be. Well, this guy is still preparing it. So this is an HPL ABC project. It's ABC3. And it works as Change anything, open up a port, and 
is just going to show you that there's sign right away. There's any, no magic to it for this one, but what's going to So that's it. This is just part of the box. If you don't change anything, that's what you're going to get. There's also a Gitty project. Mm -hmm. Let me stop this. Okay, so here's a customer model. And if you, I use for conventions, as I said earlier. So if I have a test, if I have a class called customer <laughs> model, I'm going to have a test called customer model test. And in that test, this is, there are two tests. So this is a Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft's uh, unit test framework, which uses the quality test framework. And this guy is using this in unit, this is going to use the in unit framework. So I just want to show you that you can do side by side, install it, no problem. If you want to bring an in unit, some other unit frameworks, that should be also working fine. Right. Um, you can run MS test in here. Directly in the scope open up. The, they should have the same file as custom model test. So if, you have, if you're not going to use any unit, if you're just going to use uh, what comes out of the box. So because if you just download Visual, if you just install Visual Studio 2010, just by default you have going to have this test. But for any unit, you have to do download it, install it, and add it to your references. So you can run it here, run test. So there's a, there's a couple of projects here, but it's just going to run. Okay, that test ran okay. So what we're doing here, just take a look at the test definition. So we're creating a new custom model. All right? So we're creating an object called the app. We, we pass in the parameters there. It's, very, it's a very simple model. It just puts the name. And you're looking at, you're just looking at um, value. So has anybody used the enterprise library? So enterprise library has a thing called valid. If you're doing validations, object uh, model validations. So you can use it in here. Um, it's just going to call, you're going to have a stuff called is valid, and you just need to look at how is that implemented here. The model is implement that. So your properties, and here's your is valid. So it's driven by attribute, which <coughs> property. So let's say, let's say you have a, you have a middle initial. Your middle initial is going to be only one character. So you're gonna have you can have you can put this attribute so it will always change say your middle initial is gonna be follow into um, this string validator. So you can have that in here. It's driven, you can put not null validators. I mean take a look at this. This is something that to play with. There's a lot more you can do with this. Um, so it's, it's a good good framework to use. Uh, it's called the enterprise library. I'll show you the references here. That guy, validation. And you also need to comport the data annotations between those two. All right, so let's just wrap it up. So what happened was, so this is the unit test. Everything's great. We wrote this code. This is actually a real life example. I really dummied it up, but this, this is what happened. While we're, we're working on this, and we have our custom model. It's all great, but there's a requirement. Somebody said, well, I'm going to change. You know, you know the uh, you want to hide your internals, and you would think if you don't need to be public on this, you really have to. So let's just go ahead and say. Our requirement came out to be internal. We're going to make this internal. So I'm just going to make this, this uh, the property internal. So that's all good and everything. We didn't really catch this right away. It compiles fine, no problem. But, but, but what happens is when you run the test, because the, the test actually look, looking at the, is valid. So it's going to execute that. And it's, it's doing some assertions, some assumptions. So it's going to do that. So if you run this test, you know, so we have Green here, so it's fine. So that internal, that change in that uh, access modifier to public to internal broke the validation. Do you want your customer to find out, or do you rather be, you rather find out? That's the point. So it's up to you. You know, it's just these are the things that you're gonna make the judgment. You, you can always say I don't have time to test, but again, you know, this is just the thing that this is stuff that you should be doing. I think the developer should be doing. I'd rather be working with people who are doing these on their own than just you know finding stuff as a, it goes in production. So last one I'm going to talk about Team City. Running out of time. So this Team City ties into ties into current integration practices. 
So continuous integration practices. So continuous integration is you have a build system. You have your source code. It gets built and deployed once a day or whenever somebody comes in, checks the code. If you have a single source repository, you can you automate the build. You make your build self-testing, which you have to automate these tests. You can keep the, keep the build fast. You can make sure you builds that are fast, fast as you can be. Um, and everybody can see what's happening. So that's why you need to have these are the things that you can do. Once you do that, you get these uh, artifacts. So you automate the report. So we'll do a Team City demo. So what is Team City? Has anyone heard of Team City? Is? So Team City is a, is a continuous integration tool from JetBrains. So JetBrains is a, this is actually written in Java, but it does support a lot of different uh, frameworks, including .NET, Visual Studio, and many, many versions of Visual Studio. So I installed this in this box before I got here on CM. So I'm going to show you how that looks, and that's probably going to wrap it up. We have five or seven minutes left here. So when it launches, I just put up here. You can put it in port. It doesn't matter. It's a Java-based uh, application, as I said earlier. So it's going to install it. Uh, it's free. We're going to talk about that. Make sure I'm getting it up ahead of myself. Um, so this is a, actually a unit test, uh, a project that is built on the test that I just built, the project that I just showed you. So this project is checked in the source of the source uh, Visual Team Foundation Server. So I go and look at the Team Foundation Server. I'll see my demo tooling up here. And here, my, if you're a member of the Team Foundation Server, you get to see your source control, your files, everything is checked in. So it is, it is hooked up to that. And how do you do that? Just going kind to of briefly just show you this. So this is Team, team, team City. So you click on the project. You can actually create one in the administration. These are the, this is the stuff that happened when I was debugging this. So go to administration, use this free. Again, anybody can download this today. The first, the first 20 licenses are free. So you can you can create the new build solutions. You can edit that. Just wanted to show this has already been done. I don't want to create this, don't do all that. But just wanted to show you. So it just takes a new name and what kind of what kind of builds you're gonna run into. Then you're gonna look at uh, you're gonna take a look at your build configuration. So it's very nice. It's very, very easy to learn, right? And if you're really into CI, if you want to learn CI, this is a great place to start. CI is continuous integration. So you got version control settings, your source control. This can hook up to any type. You said X, X, what's the uh, source control you said, sir? Clear case. Clear case. Let's see if you have that. Clear case. You can edit that. If you can get clear case here. Oh, it's up here. Thank you. Yeah. So it does support a lot of different tools, different uh, version control systems. So it's great. You know, if you have, I have been on teams that have a subversion, they have TFS, they have uh, Visual Source Safe uh, for bit. <laughs> so you get all these, all these different things, right? So and then we kind of go back to build configuration. You can have build steps. So there is a build step. I'm using MS uh, Visual Studio solution. You have also MS test here. You have MS build. You have NAND. You have uh, command line, .NET. So there's a different, and these are coming by from the out of box. And the last one we're going to have uh, the build steps. And the build step here. Now, next second step is our test. So I can run all the tests that are running here that are just doing um, that my, my source control is set up to. So I don't want to go here. Yeah, we can, and this is going to set up to run. Anybody who checks in five minutes left, right? So anybody who's checked in, that they can go out and just run this. There are examples out there. They have a great wiki documentation, example documentation. The alternatives to this is cruise control. Another uh, one I would say, look at TFS. If you have the whole TFS tool, go take a look at it. Uh, this is one of the things that I said is, you know, if you're going to do CI, and if you're going to do things right, you should do that. All right, so five minutes left, let's wrap it up. So licensing and upgrade, the first professional engine is free. Uh, you can download it today. Uh, for Enterprise Edition, we get NT authentication. And you're going to spend a little bit more time to do that. But then if you get more support to offline, uh, you get the support if you have any problems. Um, these are the references I'm going to give today. So definitely the growing, this is a good book, Object Oriented Software, guided by tests, so why? Just run out. So the software is getting to be more growing rather than just, okay, let's just give something there. Because how many of you got projects that are just too rigid? can expand anymore. 
So that's kind of the things that, the practices that are coming out of that book. The CI is a good book that I recommend. For Visual Studio 2010, I got most of my ideas and demos from the, this um, application lifecycle book by Brian Keller. He's one of the Microsoft MVP. He's also hosted on Channel 9. Uh, so you can take a look at that. Uh, if you don't have any Visual Studio or testers, direct testers, QAs, I suggest if you have any people, I suggest you take a look at that. This book just came out. Um, and then the continuous integration, I would also urge you to do that if you want to use the CI in the testing and why. There's a good articles here. And conclusion, so we're gonna, the goal is our ship to a less buggy and rigid software. You know, if that's your goal, if you wanna, if you wanna please your customers, if you wanna be, if you wanna learn new skills, please take a look at TDD and VDD. I mean, you need to keep an open mind in this business. We say things like today, and then 10 years later, we're gonna get a different thing. But just, you know, get the tools updated. Don't let it look at other platforms. Uh, here's 2010 and many other features. Continuous integration, and I get a chart, we don't have time for this. It's nice to have, but I don't have time. I got a production. Well, I mean, that was probably okay five years ago, but with the tools we have today, I don't buy it. No one buys it. So please take a look at it. If you don't have it, bring the ideas to the team, and just, just urge to educate your goal. Because if I can, if I saw these things right now, when you go back, if you talk to say, we, we learned about this, and take a look at it. What can we do? I mean, those tools are out there available, so please take the time to learn. And master what you want, you know, only if you only get the worst thing is going to happen is we're going to lose the bugs, right? So, so with that, I want to uh, thanks all the sponsors and Lisa and Corey and the team, Benchmark, these are the sponsors, and big thanks. So, thank you.